All right. In this fourth example from chapter 10, we see again this idea of um, using information about forces to figure out how things rotate. So this example is going to have a very similar structure to example 10c, and so it will be worth kind of comparing those two directly to see how things change a little bit when we have a solid extended object rather than masses on sticks. Okay, so we have a disk, so we can um, draw that disk where the mass of the disk, we're told, is 4 kilograms. And the radius of the disk is 20 centimeters. And right away, we want to tell ourselves that's 0.2 meters. We can divide by 100. And we are applying a force to the disk at this other radius away from the axis. So our force is 2 newtons. And the perpendicular distance to the axis where we're applying that is 5 centimeters. So we're not hitting the edge of the disk, uh, but 0.05 meters instead from the center of the axis, just like the picture here. So our goal is to find how this thing is able to um, rotate if we are basically pushing it this direction and causing rotation. So our goal is to find the angular acceleration of the disk. And so we have this equation, and I'm now going to use a couple of different colors to, to write it out. Torque equals I times alpha. That way we can more easily see the different pieces that go into this. Okay, so first of all, we have enough information to calculate the torque. The torque, if we think back to chapter 9, is the force and this time we can take the whole force times the perpendicular distance. And so we have 2 newtons times 0 0.05 meters. And so we will get 0 0.1 newton meters. Okay. The moment of inertia, we also have enough information for we know, and it's on the bottom of our slide if we forgot to look it up, we know that we can look up a standard shape like a disk and find what that moment of inertia term looks like. And in this case, it's 1 half mr squared. So the moment of inertia is 1 half times 4 times 0 0.2 squared. And so we get 0 0.08 kilograms meters squared. All right, so if we go back to this equation then, we have that torque equals I alpha. If this is our torque and this is our moment of inertia I, then torque equals I alpha means we can take 0 0.1 equals 0 0.08 times alpha. And then if we divide both sides by 0 0.08, 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.08 becomes our alpha. And so we can calculate that. Oops. All right, and we get 1.25, 1.25 1 radians per second squared. So that's our final answer for the moment of inertia, or sorry, for the angular acceleration, having solved already for the moment of inertia and the um, torque. And I color-coded things this time so we can see the number values that were important for each of these terms. So this example, although it didn't take all that much um, steps, it does require us to recognize how we can use the information given to us, and that does take some practice. So if this didn't come straightforward to you, that's perfectly fine. This video is short enough that it may be worth making a note to yourself to rewatch it in a couple of days and see if it makes more sense um, seeing it the second time through. So that's it for this one. I will see you in the next one.